Today on the Equaliser channel, we're having a look at this. Now this is an SH72 soldering iron from AliExpress. This is temperature controlled and it costs less than £10, including shipping. Now inside the box, we have apparently a soldering iron, a controller and a soldering tip. Let's go ahead and have a look at those. Okay, so you've got the soldering iron here. Let's take that out. Got the tip there. Let's have that out. The body looks quite nice. Not sure what sort of plastic it is. It might tell us that when we take it apart. But we've got a DC socket on the end there, which looks like a 2.5 by 5.5. On here we've got the temperature control thing with numbers that are too small for me to read on them. I'll have to have a look at those under a magnifier later. And the end here is obviously where the pointy hot bit goes. Let's undo that and put the put the tip in. Ooh. Okay, the tip is well and truly in. Let's screw that up. Seems quite nice. Obviously relatively reminiscent of the TS100 iron, but uh, much cheaper and far less electronic-y. This iron can run from 12 to 24 volts, and according to the manual at 12 volts, it can output 18 watts, 16 volts, 32 watts, 19 volts, 40 watts, and at 24 volts, a whole 65 watts. Of course, that might be a complete lie, but regardless, I'm going to be running it off at 19 volts today to see what it draws. And we've set the power supply for 19 volts with a current set of five amps. Let's go ahead and plug this in and turn the power supply on and see what the initial current draw is. Right, after sorting out a slight technical problem with the lead I was using being short circuit, let's go ahead and fire this up. That looks pretty good. Two amps and dropping. I can see a bit of smoke coming off the tip just then. And currently it's drawing about 10, 10 watts, something like that. Well, it's kind of all over the place, but I'm guessing that's a switching that's going on in the tip. I'm guessing this is MOSFET controlled. I won't truly know until it's taken apart, but it must be MOSFET controlled. So that looks okay. I think um, now would be a good time to find out how hot that's actually running. Well, I've only had it for five minutes and I've already managed to accidentally drop it onto something and create a little bit of smoke. Let's get some solder onto the tip. Here we go. Then we need to put that on the thermocouple. Well, wow, that's quite tasty, 431 Celsius. Wow, okay. Let's turn it down and uh, see what its lower end is. Still burning solder. Let's try that. Three hundred and fifty-eight. Oh, it's getting a bit lower. So it looks like it takes a little while to respond to turning the heat down. It's going to let that cool down a little bit, and uh, yeah, we'll come back to that. You can see on the bench meter where the MOSFET's turning on and off. Current seems to be between about 320 milliamps to 180, something like that. But yeah, it takes a, takes a while to change the temperature. Let's try it now. So it looks like... Looks like it's lower temperature range is about 200 and 
two, four, five, maybe something like that. No, even lower. This be varying a little bit. Let's say two fifty. Let's see how long it takes to heat up to what it was at before. So we'll turn that around now. Put it on there. It's definitely not a. I mean, it's not. It's not awful. But it's not quite the same uh, response as my Jabe and JBC. But obviously, you don't really, you know, you don't expect it to be like that. Not for ten pounds. Yeah, so this isn't a very, very responsive iron in terms of how quickly it picks up heat and drops heat. Now, presumably, that also means if you do need a little bit of extra heat when you're soldering a big joint, uh, you're not going to get it straight away. You're going to have to wait for that. Again, this isn't the sort of soldering iron you're going to be used for, for soldering like massive solder joints. This is just a little electronics bits and pieces, you know, in your home workshop. If you wanted something a lot better than this, then, you know, you'd pay a lot more. Okay, so the, the dial on it, which is now looking under a magnifier, says that the temperature range is 200 to 420. That is awesome for you stoners out there. I tend to work at about 350 with a with a JBC or J iron, but I think setting this to 400 would probably work out work out quite nicely. 420. I don't know if that's too hot, really. I'm so used to working at 350 that I don't know. So probably if you set it to 400, you couldn't go too far wrong. Let's try doing that now. I but I think I think that is set at 400, but it doesn't really show you. It doesn't really have an indent to show you where the temperature is actually set to. But allegedly that is now set to 400. So let's see what that is in the real world. Well, it ain't 400, that's for certain. I'm just wondering whether maybe this thing on top, this little raised bit here, is where it's supposed to show you the temperature you're set to, but it doesn't really make sense, because when you turn this all the way around, the bottom figure for the low end is actually here. So I'm not really sure. I'm going to assume it's this bit, and I'm going to set it to 400 based upon that kind of indent thing there. Right, that is apparently set to 400. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's about right. That's about 400. So, so the setting thing is, yeah, it's that thing there. It's what you line it up against, even though it can't really show you <laughs> the bit that's actually down here. That's a bit weird. I'm going to be generous to this and just set it at the maximum temperature it can be. And then I'm going to try a little bit of soldering with it. That is now set at 420. Okay, that's pretty, pretty good. It peaked up to 420 there. Yep, happy with that. I'm just going to try a little bit of soldering just onto this board, just onto the edge connector. This is an old board which doesn't work, so it's probably ideal for this. Let's zoom down a little bit and we'll just solder along here because these are reasonably large pads. We'll see what kind of a, a job it does of that. Not terrible, actually. Let's see if we can join some of those together. Mm, 
It looks pretty good. Surprisingly good, actually. We can do big pads like that. We can definitely do smaller ones like these ones here. Yeah, look at that. No problem at all doing those. Let's try that on the other side that hasn't heated up yet, but yeah. I think it's a little a little hobbyist soldering iron. I think this would be really really great. The temperature is reasonably accurate. I had no problem doing these pads here. Let's do the rest of the edge connector and just see how that turns out. I th honestly, I think this would be a really nice little soldering iron for hobbyists. It's not having any problems at all doing that. Certainly doesn't have any problems doing this sort of thing at all. Not a bad at line. That'd be great to keep in your kind of if you're an engineer that has to go on site and repair stuff. Be great to keep in your toolbox or just as a little spare soldering iron on your bench. It's pretty nice. Works surprisingly well. Of course, we've done this the wrong, wrong way round, uh, really. Because as I understand it, before you turn it on, you're supposed to take it apart. That's better, I've taken the tip out. Now how does this thing come apart? I can, I can see a seam running kind of all the way around there. So I might be able to just spudger this open. Aha, I would tell it it's clipped. It's interesting. Oh, this might not be. Might be non-destructive. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Let's have a look then. I take it this just comes out. Wow. Now just immediately looking at this board, it doesn't have an awful lot on it. I mean, that could be a MOSFET and that could be a micro of some sort. So on here we have a TPC8107 and that is a MOSFET. And the other chip on here is an LM2904, and that's this chip here, and this is a dual operational amplifier. Now this is controlling what the MOSFET's doing based upon feedback from the tip contacts here and the potentiometer there. That is actually incredibly simple, and I really like that. I like the simplicity of that. It would probably be very easy to repair if you wanted to, although probably for £10 you wouldn't bother. And finally, let's have a look under the microscope and get a bit of a closer look at what the board looks like, what the soldering's like, and what components are on there. So we've got our connectors up here, the clips there for the soldering iron tip itself. There we have our MOSFET, a couple of support components on the side there. Some more discretes up here, mainly resistors. And then there we have our dual op amp. Now interestingly enough, there's an LED there. Well, there's nowhere on the case for an LED to shine out of it, so I'm not really sure what that's for. I might try running it up on the power supply and just seeing if it, if it actually lights up. And I can't imagine why they'd fit it if you can't see it. And there's literally, there's nowhere on the case for it to shine through. Just double checking now. No, there's nowhere at all on the case for that to shine through. So why has it got an LED on it? I mean, why go to the expense to fit it if you're not going to use it? Right, my interest has been piqued. I want to get that plugged in and get the, uh, the tip back on it and see if that LED actually comes on. I don't know how bright that LED is going to be, so I might just keep it under the microscope and do that. Let's just plug it in and just see if it comes on just ordinarily plugged in without a tip on. Not 
No, nothing at all. Looks like one end of it isn't soldered. Look at that. Why is it there then? I'm going to put the tip on and just see if it comes on there. And if it doesn't, I'm going to resolder it and then see if it comes on. It's a mystery. Why is it there? Okay, the soldering iron tip is in. Let's see if this lights up. Oh, we have something. It's glowing. And now it's flickering. I'm guessing that's the, the heating pulse is going to the going to the tip. Why is that on there? Is it on there for some sort of a, a debugging or something if, if it's not working? I mean, you could just stick it across an oscilloscope and, and view the pulses. It might be a debug LED. It'd be nice to have that brought to the outside. I quite like the idea of having that kind of flickering away, showing me it's on and what it's doing. Let me just try turning the um, temperature dial. It's interesting. Let me turn it down. Yeah, you can see it adjusting for the temperature. Let's turn it right down. It's now obviously it's not supplying any power to the tip to cool it down. We'll just wait for that to drop. Now we can see it's pulsing because the tip has dropped down to its temperature that it requires. That's really cool. I definitely like the idea of having that on the outside of the, the thing itself. We could probably make it a little bit brighter. Change the resistor that's powering it, which would be easy enough to find out. Maybe make it blue, because, well, obviously I'm obsessed with blue LEDs. And you have a little indicator just showing the pulse is going to the tip. That's really, really cool. Right, I've put it back together now, and there's definitely nowhere in that case, because the LED's around here, where that LED can shine out of. So it must be some sort of a debug thing, I guess. If you've enjoyed learning about the hidden secrets of a sub 10 pound temperature controlled soldering iron from AliExpress, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching this video. Goodbye.